Welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time I'm going to demonstrate video editing on a RISC-V computer, specifically this Cypede Lychee Pi-4A. And this is, I think, another fantastic milestone for the development of RISC-V as an end-user computing technology. This video also happens to be the 500th Explaining Computers episode. And therefore, after our RISC-V demonstration, I'm going to spend just a few minutes looking back at some of the highlights of the past 499 videos. And then after that, I want to give you a very important announcement about a long overdue update to the website explainingcomputers.com. So let's go and get started. Right. Here we are with the Cypede Lychee Pi 4A up and running, as it so often is here these days. I've become very fond of this board over the past few months, particularly, I guess, because I used it so heavily during my RISC-V week not that long ago. And if we go across to its Debian desktop, you may remember that during RISC-V week, I couldn't run Caden Live to do any video editing. I tried, I couldn't get it to work, but just over a day after the video released, the developers from Cypede reached out with information on the right libraries to install, which, after a repository update, installed with no issues at all. And so if I go to Applications and down to Multimedia, there is Caden Live, and it will run up. I'll do all of this in real time so you can see exactly how well it works. And this is coming up, come on, you can do it pretty quickly. That's pretty good. There are many computers that take longer than that to launch a video editor. And if I just press Control, Shift and F, we'll get full screen like that. And I would point out to make everything work here as well as it can, I'm using proxies, which I always do when I'm running Caden Live on a computer which hasn't got that much power. We'll also adjust our display like that. So if I go to Settings, I'll show you what I've done. We'll go to Configure Caden Live, and from there we'll go down to a Proxy Clips. And you'll see I've enabled proxy clips for uh, videos larger than a uh, thousand pixels across. So that's a uh, setup. And once you've got that set, every time Caden Live creates a new project, it'll automatically activate proxies. So let's show you a few test edits so you can see what is going on. First of all, we'll load in, I think, uh, that. This was the first test I did. You might have seen this out on social media because I put it out on various platforms as soon as I tested this out and went, wow, it works. And if I just play here, You'll see it does work. Our ducks are moving around as they should. We've got working audio and video. This is HDMI audio. You can see the transitions take a little bit of time to a playthrough. They're not absolutely perfect, but you could certainly work with this. You could certainly edit perfectly well on this system. And of course, the final outputted video would be absolutely fine. So as you can see, this works. We can uh, scrub the timeline. Things, things. This is a functional editor. Let's bring in a couple of other tests just to show you uh, something else. I've uh, tried starting the edit for this video here in uh, Caden Live, which I thought would be interesting. Let's go back to the start of this, all the way back uh, over there. We'll play this. Welcome to another video from yes, Explaining. Yes, as you can see, I could edit this video this time here on a RISC-V system. system. I could have edited the RISC-V week video on the Lychee Pi 4A. I knew it was technically possible in terms of the hardware. We just didn't have the software quite at that time. At least I didn't to make it happen. But it, it's great to see it's working now. I'm very, very impressed with this. This really is fantastic for RISC-V. And I want to point out here, I'm not saying everyone should edit videos on this particular piece of hardware. That the issue here is that we're seeing the development of RISC-V from a, a platform that, you know, two years ago, you couldn't do anything like this on the desktop. And we're now running a video editor. This really is fantastic progress. And I'm sure some of you want to know, how does this board compare to uh, other boards I've tested in the past, despite what I've just said about this being about the ISA and its development rather than particular hardware? You want to know, and that's perfectly reasonable. So let's just bring in my standard test uh, clip. If I can go there in the right place, it is... Uh, uh, where is it? It is um, that one there, isn't it? I should be able to remember what my own files are, shouldn't I? But anyway, this is a very, very simple edit, but it's one I've used before. And if we go to a project up there and to a render like that, there we are. 
and uh, I've set up the script, which I always set up, to render this out. And to give you the critical information, on an 8GB Raspberry Pi 4, this takes 2 minutes and 19 seconds to render. On an Orange Pi 5, it takes 52 seconds to render. And on the BMAX B1 Plus $100 Mini PC I tested earlier this year, it took 1 minute and 45 seconds. And I've not tested this yet on the uh, Lychee Pi 4a. I've yet to render anything using RISC 5 This is the first time I'm going to be rendering anything on other than an x86 or ARM processor. So let's start the script and see how it does. And there we are, it started off and it's going to have a bit of fun. So uh, we will speed on through, we'll let it get on with the task and uh, speed on through till it's almost finished. And there we are, it's finished with a final render time of 18 minutes, 56 seconds. It's not yet ready to compete with the uh, boards I mentioned earlier. And uh, I've never seen a little fan on the Lychee Pi 4a spin so fast. I bet the board is very pleased I didn't use it to edit a whole video and render it out during my RISC 5 week. But uh, even so, it has worked. Clearly, we don't have hardware accelerated video encoding going on here. It's not using the GPU. Maybe it's only using one CPU core. I don't know. But at least it works. And I still think that's amazing. We can video edit on a RISC 5 system. And I guess we should actually check things uh, have worked. Let's just come out of this and uh, go to the file manager. Where did I send it? I sent it to videos, didn't I, somewhere? I think, did I send it to there? Uh, I think I did. Yes, there it is. Look, there's the uh, file and there's the test. And it should open in VLC Media Player, which is uh, working again. Yes, there it is. This is the first video I've ever rendered where it's not touched an x86 or an ARM core to do the final Render, it's all been done on a RISC 5 system. I think that is very impressive. I'm sure some of you are saying it's very slow, Chris, but it works. This is the start of something. This is a fantastic piece of innovation. I'm very pleased to be able to demonstrate this in the 500th Explaining Computers video. Back in 2008, the first Explaining Computers video was about Web 2.0 and featured my attempt to nail a jelly to a wall. This was soon followed by Explaining Cloud Computing as well as related cloud content, which was what the channel was initially known for. But I then made an episode on the brand new USB 3.0, which became the first video to get a million views. Soon after, we had the first PC build on the channel, which I almost didn't post as I wasn't confident that the video was any good. And this remains the only episode where I didn't shoot a piece to camera at the end. In 2012, a big hit was Big Data, for which I remember animating lots of data scenarios that featured the metal characters that used to appear in the title sequence. And then, in October 2013, I uploaded my first video about something called a Raspberry Pi. You may have heard of them, as they've since appeared on the channel a few times. In December 2015, we had the first channel update, after which the channel went weekly, with a video uploaded every single Sunday since that time. Not much later, I enjoyed making a series of videos on spreadsheets, the first of which is still getting a lot of views. Around this time, there were also several videos on Raspberry Pi cooling, as well as one called Raspberry Pi using GPIO inputs. This included read switches and optical sensors, and in my view, remains one of my best single board computer episodes. The next year, I've frozen M-Disc and a regular DVD in a block of ice for an experiment. In January 2017, we then unboxed my silver play button, which was an amazing day. 2017 also included the episode on SSD life expectancy, which remains the most popular Explaining Computers video. Fast forward to 2019, and there was a six-part build series called Ryzen Budget PC. And one of the things I did when making these videos was to choose red components so they would look good in the video thumbnails. 
Since that time, I've also built a hamster feeder with a Raspberry Pi Zero, interviewed Eben Upton from Raspberry Pi, and used one of his Pico microcontrollers to build a PicoMite VGA boot to basic computer, which was really cool and I consider to be the best video so far in 2023. However, my favourite video of the first 500 is explaining desktop PC hardware. This took ages to animate and left me with a detailed 3D model of a desktop PC that now has a starring role in the current titles. Talking of which, I thought it might be nice to look back to how everything started with a new high definition render of the original opening sequence. Now, here we are on explainingcomputers.com which I created in 2007, not as a blog, but as an online computing textbook with different categories along the top of the menu, as you can see, with the idea being these pages would update over time. And initially that's what occurred, but then I created the Explaining Computers YouTube channel to try and promote the website. And this got successful, and over the years, I've spent more and more time making video content and less and less time updating the website, which in places has got very out of date. And so what I've now done to celebrate 500 videos is to update every single page and every single graphic on this site. In particular, I've had a lot of requests to make it easier to find particular Explaining Computers videos. And to do this, I've created 24 video category pages some of which you can see around the edges of the home page here on the home page. So for example, you could click on Linux videos and here you'll find all of my current Linux distro reviews, all of my uh, Linux guides, all of the legacy reviews, etc. And I've also used the new video category pages to update the SBCs page where you can get to uh, all of my different SBC reviews on this page, either by the links at the bottom or via the pictures at the top to select my architecture. So you can get to all the Raspberry Pi reviews, and it's great that my 499th video was the Raspberry Pi 5 review, or you can get to my other ARM SBC reviews, there's quite a lot of those, or the XX6 reviews, or indeed the RISC 5 reviews. And if you're not looking for SBC content or things you can find around the edges of the homepage, you're still only two or three clicks away from any particular video, just by going to the videos page, and here you'll find videos under hopefully what are fairly reasonable categories, operating systems and applications, computer hardware. You can get, for example, to all of my PC builds and upgrades. I've had a fascinating time looking back through all my content and, and categorizing it. And uh, other than that, we've got, what did I call them? Computing issues and developments, various things there, and also SBCs and related content, not just reviews of boards, but also project-based videos. And if we go to a project-based videos page, you'll find that on these kind of pages, there aren't just links to videos themselves, there are also links to support pages. So for example, here's the support page for the Raspberry Pi Pico Wi-Fi controlled robot, where you can access code and also wiring diagrams. So that's what I've done to celebrate 500 videos. I've updated the website to better support the YouTube channel. A few months ago, in a channel update, I asked what you thought I should do in the 500th Explaining Computers video. And surprisingly, nobody suggested demonstrating video editing on RISC-V hardware. However, many people did say I should wear a different colour shirt, and so here I am in a green shirt. Except this isn't actually a green shirt. No, 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 it's one of those special RGB shirts. And it comes in the pocket here with a remote control. So for example, if I want this to be, I don't know, say, a red shirt, like that is now a red shirt. Or it might be a yellow shirt. Or it could be a blue shirt. I think we'll stick with the blue shirt, put away the remote control. Anyway, now, We've come to the end of the 500th Explaining Computers video. 
Thanks for watching the channel, particularly if you've been watching for years and years and years, as I know some of you have. And if you just joined us, I hope you've adjusted to what goes on here on Explaining Computers. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon.